Dear Professor Gennaro, for the case study assignment I have chosen Capital, Waycrock and McDonald's, the words loving it. First, I'm going to give a brief introduction of McDonald's. McDonald's Corporation is the world's largest chain of hamburger fast food restaurants. It is founded by Waycrock. McDonald's restaurants are found in 119 countries and territories around the world and serve 58 million customers each day. McDonald's operates over 31,000 restaurants worldwide and employ more than 1.5 million people. The company also operates other restaurant brands such as Piles Cafe. Now I will turn to this article. This article explores the nature of McDonald's public relations strategies and their effect on American culture. McDonald's has used media to create an American mythology of consumption. McDonald's ads have a mystical influence on the Americans. These ads aim at strengthening connection between McDonald's and America. These advertisements show that McDonald's represents the American way of life. Every year, McDonald's spent huge amount of money on its ad campaigns to promote its image as being America and to spread American culture around the world. The textual analysis of McDonald's ads is that it is a kid's text fused with Ray Kroc's psych to justify consumption as a way of life, whereas the audience perception of McDonald's is that it is a place where consumption functions as the means through which its inhabitants gain their identities. This article represents McDonald's as an evil and profit-driven corporation which can do anything to make profit. McDonald's mostly employ teenagers, females, and seniors at lower positions at minimum wages. It enforces patriarchy by having male-dominating management, it undermines the efforts of women in the workplace, and it also overlooks their issues. According to this article, reports of sexual harassment were suppressed by the company's bureaucracy. Also, this article presents McDonald's goals and its marketing strategies as being influenced by Ray Kroc's psyche and personality. In short, through the use of media, McDonald's has successfully positioned itself as America, providing vision, identity, and ideology to its citizens. It is a place where displaced individuals can turn to to achieve a sense of community. It offers them with something better to escape into by promoting itself as a place where what you want is what you get. The political economy of McDonald's and children's lives show that McDonald's promotes itself as a provider of pleasure and care during stressful times of children's lives. In the past, children turned to their parents to seek comfort and aid, but today their roles have been overtaken by McDonald's, which is a place where a child finds happiness. This new relationship which has emerged between children and McDonald's is the result of McDonald's mediated kinder culture. McDonald's advertising strategies aim at isolating children from their parents and turn them into a form of power. This power results due to media's influence which usually goes unnoticed and not understood by the parents and is created by McDonald's ads. Hence, McDonald's land is an imagined community which gives an identity, ideology, and a sense of belonging to the American children and the children around the world who want to experience the feeling of being American. According to this article, McDonald's and its advertisers see children as consumers in training. Since the media works in such a natural way and due to lack of critical media literacy skills, the recipients of media messages often fail to decode these messages, fail to understand the reasons of production of these messages, and fail to understand their impact on them. Therefore, they easily fall prey to the media and become active consumers. Now uh, comes the big question. Does diverse media exist? I think that stories presented in this article are few and narrow and are only directed towards the young children. These stories promise happiness, pleasure, comfort, youthfulness, family experience, and escape from the real world's cruel realities. Through its marketing strategies, McDonald's is trying to target different segments of young children 
which includes preschool children, elementary school, and high school children. McDonald's uses various mediums like participating in community events, sponsoring various sports events, advertisements on TV and radio. Today we also find advertisements on Facebook, YouTube and other social networking sites. McDonald's ads depict uh, young children sitting around the table having a conversation like adults with their kiddie jokes. As stated in the previous articles, here McDonald's is turning the young children to adults using media. Next comes the question of how McDonald's practices convergence and synergy. McDonald's practices convergence by owning McDonald land, Ronald McDonald the clown, and Ronald McDonald houses, whereas McDonald's practices synergy by using them in advertisements to build, to build and promote their messages. For example, Ronald McDonald is a clown character used as a primary mascot of McDonald's fast food restaurant chain. In television commercials, the clown inhabits a fantasy world called McDonaldland and has adventures with his friends Mayor McCheese, the Hamburglar, Birdie, the Early Bird, and the Fry Kids. There are also Warner McDonald houses where parents can stay overnight when visiting sick children in nearby chronic care facilities. Since August 2003, McDonald has been officially styled as the Chief Happiness Officer of the McDonald's Corporation. Next comes the question that what is the connection between home and family for McDonald's and its storytelling? McDonald's aim at providing a standardized service around the world. Therefore, Americans visiting McDonald's, let's say in Australia, will get the same food, same service, and, help, and hence will feel like being at home. McDonald's deploy family and home to position McDonald's as the defender of the American way of life. McDonald's ads tell the story of American imperialism at global level and story of homes and families which are conflict-free. They also tell the story of McDonald's as being a safe haven for children and where the family members come together. Next comes the question, who benefits from these stories? I think that McDonald's is the one who benefits the most from the stories told in this article by earning huge amounts of revenue from restaurants around the world. Beside McDonald's, I think children also benefit who get comfort and happiness and refuge in the McDonald land from the harsh realities of life. I also think that the reader of this article benefits as well because now she can see McDonald's Corporation from a totally different angle. In conclusion, I would say that children are positioned by marketers and are empowered to make decisions. These children draw their own meanings from the media and however, the corporations like McDonald's exploit them and attempt to mold their innocent minds. Therefore, it becomes crucially important to provide the young children with critical media literacy as they are continuously a target of mass marketing and merchandising. These corporations view the young children as a multi-billion dollar industry and aim at turning them into their lifelong consumers. Hence, it is the time that we should emphasize at equipping our children with critical media literacy skills. The educational institutions and society should provide support, resources, and training to the teachers so they can successfully play their part in critical media instruction. As a result, the young children will be able to understand the influences of media on their lives, will be able to decode media messages, and will be able to take action by questioning the role of society and government, which often overlooks the harmful media practices. Hence, it will generate critical and successful citizens of the society. And that's the end. Thank you.